Hi, everybody. I'm here with Lauren Mostel, and we're talking recruiter enablement. Lauren, nice to see you. Uh, give us a quick introduction to you. Hi, thanks. Nice to see you too. So I am Lauren. I run a business called Grasshopper Talent and I am working either finding sustainable businesses, other people, so sourcing talent for them, or I'm making people more sustainable uh, by running workshops with them. Right. Let's come back to that because I think that's really interesting. So uh, let's talk about recruiter enablement first time. You've worked in lots of big companies and you've seen lots of different ways of doing it. What's recruiter enablement to you and what's your overall sort of perspectives? Um, recruiter enablement to me, um, which is a nice phrase because I don't think I've often, I've not used it in that term. But obviously, it's what we do as recruitment leaders all the time, trying to get people to connect and talk to each other. Um, but I think nothing beats a good conversation and actually how do you transfer skills and knowledge and kind of look at that big skills matrix across teams across countries or whatever it might be in departments um, that you've learned some things already what's gone wrong what's gone well how can I share that knowledge um, so I've worked in um, businesses where you've got a either national different teams so you've got a resourcing team you've got a partnering team or it might be that they're all doing the same things that, for instance in spec savers but in different countries so it was always about what systems and processes can we use to learn from each other and how do we check in? But the big thing that always, I think, works is the good old chat. <laughs> how do you make sure that's happening and you're transferring that conversation and making it really human? Because a lot of the time systems and processes can feel like a bit of admin. So that's needed because we're humans and we'll forget. But how do you have the human chat as well and, and make it more about learning from each other and feeling like a team? Yes. No, I agree. Um, so I think that we we people people are always coming up with new and better ways of doing things. Uh, mm. You know, recruiters typically are quite innovative, and um, the channels that they use and the different kind of techniques that they use are always um, developing. It's quite dynamic. So, what would you advise as like some of the best ways to go about? making sure that people do stop and go, right, I need to talk to everybody else about this because I think everybody else will benefit from this. Or you know, should you put in place some kind of a process to make it happen? Or what, what do you think? I think, you know, what would be the best? Let me, I, I personally think things like that need to be encouraged from leaders. There needs to be something. you and an easy of course make it easy one click possible set up a meeting whatever the process might be that needs to be in place but you can put in billions of processes but without a bit of a reward system or a bit of a success metric around it I don't think things in bed unless you it could be part of the onboarding as well you get people really excited about it and they really want to do it but if you're transferring a team over I think you need the leader to say this is what we do. And the more you do that, the more I'm going to say thank you, give you a bonus, put a point on your point system sort of thing, because actually sharing knowledge is what we're all about. It's embedding that in the culture, I think. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. OK, um, let's talk a bit more about sustainability then. Talk about what you're doing with Grasshopper Talent. So uh, you said making people more sustainable. I'd love to know what that means, like eternal life. <laughs> but no, yeah, tell us, tell us about yeah. it. <laughs> it's me trying to coin a phrase in between the two areas of the business, I suppose. Um, I worked in the learning and development side of people as well as talent acquisition. And a lot of this kind of enablement of recruiters is about training them as well. Yes. So I retrained in the pandemic and, you know, made life decisions, as you do. And I, I tried to retrain train in sustainability. I didn't want to be a consultant, so I wanted to work with workshops and HR. So a lot of it is about talking to HR, how do you embed sustainability into your HR objectives? Similar to what I've just been saying, people can read a document, look at the process, great, we've got an ESG model, fabulous, but unless you embed it in day to day, this is why it's gonna be better for you in your career or for us as a business or for your pay packet or whatever the reward may be. So I, I make people more sustainable through the people strategy um, or the kind of I'll find you somebody, the good old recruitment agency model of um, let's see what I've got in the network and, and try and find some people. So it's it's two ways of working in sustainability. Great. I absolutely love it. It's um, 
something that really links to a company's employer brand and their EVP mm -hmm. and uh, you know every business needs to be really committed to to doing this type of thing. When I think about sustainability, I think about like uh, not relying on fossil fuels and that mm -hmm. type of thing. That doesn't mm -hmm. seem a very people led kind of aspect of it. What would be the what would be like the top two or three issues as it relates to people? Good question. So again, it's bringing together small actions to make a big impact. So the, the power of a business and its culture is huge compared to one person making a difference. So again, if you're, you, it, you can make a big difference, you can make an initial difference if you're part of the supply chain, you can deal with suppliers and you can change that so that their links to fossil fuels or investing in fossil fuels through any financial way it is yeah. one way of doing it. But again, if you're dealing with the HR uh, team, there are a lot of things about rewards pension pots uh, yes. and things like that so if you as a company can change where you're investing your money huge difference because uh, that's uh, in fact changing your pension is 21 times more effective than any other carbon reducing uh, thing you can do so it's really important for companies to get involved with that but again you can just educate people on it and understand how they can make a difference like give them more annual leave if they're not going to fly so you know put your money where your mouth is and say okay if you're going to take a train we'll give you two days annual leave again it's a perk it's employer brand it's kind of nice it's, yeah. it's nice to know and um, so there's lots of different ways of doing it um that aren't just fossil fuels it's just changing little behaviors to make a big impact well great hat tip you for per, for kind of uh pivoting slightly and uh yeah. taking this angle forward so uh congratulations well done good luck and uh, thank you for taking the time to join me today and talk a bit more about it. Thank you very much.